My mother has changed her will to benefit one of my siblings. We think she was influenced by the one benefiting. My mother is 89. One of my brothers moved in with her several years after my dad passed. He took over the place. She changed her will yesterday to allow him to live in the house and be the sole and be the sole ownership over the house and land until he dies. I believe he has influenced her into doing this. Can we stop this or not? I was on the will as an executor with one of my other brothers. She has taken me off and put the brother who lives with her in my place there are three brothers yeah i was trying to keep track of the brothers so there's um, three brothers one brother moves in with mama says hey mama i need this home Co kind of coerces her or just, allegedly coerces her into changing her will so that he can the live one in who there. lives in the house yep he's the one that lives in the house so he lives in the house and got her to change the will yep I'm gonna steven what do we do based on what i know with that brother one is the brother who's kind of a dirt bag yeah um <laughs> so under georgia law and the law of most states there are multiple grounds to set aside a will two of them were hit hit on in this so the first ground would be undue influence, um, where the undue influence occurs where one person exerts their will over another person to get that person to do something that favors them. It's a way of manipulating someone, controlling their behavior. In most states' laws, that voids a contract or a will where that existed. Okay, so hold on. So so undue influence is this idea that you can, if you make someone change their actions or change a legal document, in this case, like a will, um, like, I don't know. Can you give me a clear-cut example of what undue influence um, is? So this is almost close. So if you make me sign a contract, but you hold a gun to my head. Gotcha. Um, that's like the cleanest example of like a situation like that. Here's where, a hostage situation. Yeah, or, you signed okay. it, but you weren't completely in control. Gotcha. Um, under yeah. duress. I under think, duress. Is what, yeah. I've, what I've heard. Duress, undue influence. Yes. And there, and there are slightly different variations. Okay. depends on the state. Um, there are actual differences between duress and undue influence, but... If two people are in what's called a confidential relationship, um, where a confidential relationship is one where um, a vulnerable person is dependent on another person um, for their health care safety, um, where there's kind of a really close legal entanglement, that if there's a confidential relationship and that the party in the confidential relationship has a will amended to be in their favor, then there's a presumption of undue influence. Gotcha. And, that, and that brother who did it has to rebut that presumption by showing the mother wanted to, in fact, change her will. Um, okay, hold on. So there's a lot of big words that are being thrown around here. Uh -huh. and I'm, so part of the dynamic of this show is that I don't know anything about anything, and Stephen knows absolutely everything about estate planning, probate, and uh, wills, and testaments, and stuff like that. Um, okay, so so th you said presumption. So, yes. So we assume, the court assumes that this is messed up. Yeah, the court assumes that this is messed up. Yeah, so it becomes the obligation. Yeah, I, the I guess courts general operate with, with uh, use the word burdens um, okay. to mean like who has yeah, to show the proof. case. Okay. Um, yeah, burdens of proof. So um, with a will case, burdens keep shifting. So the person who puts forward a will for probate, so once his mother passes, um, if you put forward a will for probate, he has the initial burden of showing that it was a valid will. Like it was written in down, it had executors, it had a distribution plan, and it was signed in witness. Um, and if he passes that burden, which most wills pass that burden, um, if he doesn't pass that burden, it's not considered to be a will. Gotcha. Um, then the burden shifts to anyone who disagrees with the probate of the will. They now have to prove that that will is the product of fraud, duress, undue influence, um, anything that would substitute the judgment of someone else for the judgment of the deceased person. Okay. Um, and if they show that, then the burden shifts one more time to the original, um, um, we call it the propound of the person who filed the will for probate. Um, to, sh to rebut, to, they have now the burden of rebutting that evidence that the will was the product of fraud, duress, undue influence, etc., and that it was valid. And then, in between all those burden shiftings, the judge has to determine what actually happened. So we talked about the undue influence, um, 
But the other thing I'm re- I'm also concerned about is incapacity. Okay. So he said I believe the mother was 89. Yep, she's 89, which is not young. Um, <laughs> there are 89 year olds who are very very sharp, um, and 89 year olds who are not sharp at all. If she is dependent on her son for her care, she might be at the uh, she might be unable to make sound legal decisions. So what Georgia law requires, what most other states do as well, is that they require you to be of sound mind at the moment you sign the will. You can be out of your mind before you sign it. You can be after your mind after you sign it. But if you're clear yeah, when you in sign that it. moment, your ink hits the paper, then you're good. So if um, you have like a video of yourself like... That's dangerous. Hey, I'm totally good. Look at me. I'm reading the paper, and I just signed my will. That you can't do that. You can. Oh, okay. Um, it's just, that's just when you do that. You present. Ev- if 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 your situation's in the gray zone enough where there's video, mm-hmm. people would see what they want to see in a video. Gotcha. So if you have a video of a frail nine eighty nine year old lady, <laughs> a jury or a judge might not be convinced that she's of sound mind just looking at them. Okay. So you better be very 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 confident that video is going to show what you want it. She does show. a backflip and then yeah. signs the will. Okay. Yeah. But, if she's, but if she's like completely conversational, she identifies all the parties, all the potential influencing parties are out of the room, um, and it's clear that she's not vulnerable. She just wants her – she has decided I'm going to leave my son this because I want to leave my son that. Mm-hmm. Um, then that's fine. As far as her will goes though, um, there's not much you can do to change a will. You can't make anyone change their will before they die. If you don't like their disp- how it distributes, you have to fight it later or you can get her declared incompetent now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful or at least enjoyable um, listening to us um, rip apart the great legal questions from the depths of the internet. It would help us out if you could like, share, or leave a comment below this video. Also, if you want to protect your family through the estate planning process, please give us a call. Our direct number is 404. 404- 738-9538. And you can also leave us an email at the address below.